welcome you to another episode of Inside the Humidor. Today we're going to be touching on Christmas gifts and uh, special cigars, some new ones that have come out, some rum aging. We're also going to uh, talk a little bit about how uh, cigars can uh, be part of uh, family gifting and different hobbies that can go on in a family. So stay tuned. This is a special show. to another exciting edition of Inside the Humidor. I'm Josh Eagle alongside Ed Randy Berry as always. And we got a special guest, Kevin Kurtz, in here today. We just had a little bit of excitement, boys. We were gonna be talking about the the barrel, the rum barrel aged Nicaraguan from Camacho, which is a very nice cigar that we just got a chance to smoke, but the power went out. So and we all smoked. It. So we all smoked it out already, <laughs> so we're smoking other cigars. But we'll give you a little bit of insight into that cigar. Uh, I enjoyed it very much. Also today, we're going to talk a little bit about, um, you know, the holidays are coming up. Yes, they are. They sneak up on us pretty quick. There's always some great things you can get, grab. Also, a lot of these companies do some promo material. We're going to show you some of that fun stuff today. And then finally, we're going to be talking about clubs, cigar clubs, and the type of club, you know, especially like membership clubs with certain types of cigars or sample clubs where they send you in the mail or catalog clubs, things like that, where they let you know a little bit on the inside of, of what a club is all about. So without further ado, we also have it sponsored today by Highland Park, 12-year-old <laughs> Scotch from the Orkney Highlands in Scotland. It's a nice um, floral citrus blend, not too much of the peat. Smoke is going great with the cigars. Um, without further ado, let's talk a little bit about the Camacho Nicaraguan Barrel Age cigar that we just had the, the pleasure of. So I think Kevin might still, still have it. Still working Kevin on still it. Has still it. working on it. All right. Um, they have a Corojo Nicaraguan wrapper from Esteli that they took and they put in Ford de Caña barrels. If you're not familiar with Ford de Caña, it is a Nicaraguan rum. It's fantastic. It is. And some of the barrels that they use were up to 25 years old. Um, and I really did. I don't know about you guys. I could actually get some of that sweet rum on that cigar. Very subtle. Very, very light, subtle. Yeah, but very subtle. But it doesn't it, taste it like seemed a to be Morgan. there. Yeah, it was definitely there. You still had some of that Nicaraguan pepper, but then they blended it out with... Um, you know, Pico Otto, some of the Dominican, you know, that are a little bit sweeter tobaccos. And I thought it was a really nice, smooth, surprisingly sweet cigar, which I wasn't expecting yeah. when you fire up a, a Nicaraguan, you know, aged in a rum barrel. I wasn't surprised. I was surprised how sweet it was. Yeah, I was too. But it was a very pleasant cigar. Yeah, and through the through those decent changes, I thought it was relatively one-dimensional, but that's not never a bad thing sometimes. You no, if you it. like that note, if you like that one dimension, it's a great one to go with. I mean, there's, I'm a big fan of the ones that twist and turn and keep you real interested, but occasionally, if you find a cigar that just has that note you like, yeah, it's and the it was same all, way all, there, the, way all the way through. through. That's what, that's what I got wrong with the cigar, for sure. So, you know, again, if you can see the box there, we'll, we'll show it to you, but they have a nice high lacquer, high glass, gloss boxes when they rebranded Camacho. You know, Davidoff is the parent company. Uh, they're making some really great cigars. I'm smoking the Camacho Ecuador right now. You can see it's got a real modern looking band. They've kind of gone away from the traditional look with Camacho. They've got a uh, really eye catching appealing. Right. That's actually one of my favorites that they make. Well, they've got. This is the Ecuador, what, yeah. What, <clears throat> one of their themes is bold. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a mild, medium cigar like Griollo or the Connecticut. Uh, or all the way up to the triple Maduros and the, yeah, and, uh, the power, uh, what, what's that called? Yeah, actually, Power Band. Power Band. Yeah, Power yeah. Band from Camacho. They have some limited stuff, the Liberty, which is always worth smoking right. every time it comes out. It's a 4th of July release. Always fantastic. Always. Every time they do it, the box presentation comes in its own little coffin, so like an individual human. Right. And this year they had a pin in there too. Yeah, this year they had a commemorative pin. Yeah. But it, it's really definitely worth it getting around the Fourth of July holiday. Right. Something to, to celebrate the year, uh, another year of uh, independence here in the United States of America. Sorry. Right. Sorry, right. 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 we're just on a watch list now. <laughs> so, I don't worry about it. so, with the holidays coming up. I wanted to introduce that cigar. It's a brand new cigar from Camacho, but there's a lot of fun things that happen around the holidays. There's gift sets. Uh, there's things you wouldn't normally buy for yourself if you're a cigar smoker. So you know, make that list, give it to your significant other and your kids, whoever's going to be shopping for you for Christmas. 
and, and have them buy something that you wouldn't normally buy. I know that what you always get is a good gift, but sometimes you got to find something from outside the box. And I think that these were, you know, some of these gifts. This is the time to do it. Absolutely. Nice high-end cutter, high-end high lighter. New cigar. Yeah, a high-end cutter, high-end lighter, something you wouldn't, you know, you say to yourself, I'll lose the lighter. It's something you don't want to spend your own money on. But as a gift, you know, $50, $60 cutter, surprisingly, people don't lose them as often as they think they do. I've had the same $50 cutter for a decade. It's the same reason I buy expensive sunglasses. I lose the cheap ones. I know exactly where all of my expensive sunglasses are. <laughs> yeah. I spend that much money on them. I know where they are. Fair well, enough. I wish I was that good at that. Yeah, and you can either have five $5 cutters that you bought and lose them all, or, you know, it, and you already spent $25 on a cutter and you have none of them to show for it anyway. So. Yeah. But there's some great gifts from me, you know, from Zycar, from from Vector, from Calibri. Well, she's got weapons that can cut a cigar too. Yeah, yeah. There's, <laughs> there's that. <laughs> but around the holidays, you you also see some promotions in your local, you know, brick and mortar cigar that's right. shop. That's going to be, um, you know, if you buy, promoting you to buy some of the stuff and some of the stuff from Camacho and our little theme this year. They brought out a little cool little pocket knife. It's got a lot of different functions That's a pretty, on it. Uh, You're gonna have big knife. pockets to carry that. As yeah, a there's a, you knife. can see there's a lot of different functions from bottle over to screwdrivers, flashlight, even a mini flashlight on there. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Get a little pretty flashlight. bright too. Yeah, so it's not it's it's a really good, um, you know, what is it a hundred dollars swag item that you can get, and you're gonna get them for free when you purchase some cigars. Avo, and it's wood, which is cool. Avo has this great little speaker here. This is a Bluetooth speaker with little volume controls, USB in the back. Has a little power, like it's a little amp, you know, that um, the gentleman who makes Avo cigars was in the jazz. He actually passed away this year. Yeah, he did. He was, how old was he? Yuvetsian was... Uh, 82, I want to say? I think he might have been older. Was he older? Yeah, I think he, he might was have around 90. I think he was close to 90. And in front here, we have a Camacho ashtray. That's a great little gift. Anytime, you know, people don't usually spend some of their own money on an ashtray either, but that's always a great piece to add to your game room, to your smoking room. Man shed, man cave, back porch, front porch, those things make great gifts. Then there's your traditional. This particular one that's right here Samplers. is a sampler. You know, you're getting the taste of, in this particular one, it's H. Upman, Monte Cristo, and Romeo and Juliet. You get a sampling of their cigars across, and usually they're going to offer it as a discount. You know, yeah. it's going to be well discounted for nine cigars. And that is. This particular one, I'm not even sure what the retail is on that, but it's way less than buying nine sticks, you know, off yeah. the shelf. Well, just three Monte Cristos, it cost you over $30. Oh, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Toro, so. Uh, right there. I'm not sure right. what that price is, but I was thinking it was somewhere around $75 or something. Yeah, I think it might even be less. I think it is wow. less. Yeah. So. There's a, there's good value in those gift packs. Yeah. And they're something fun. They're easy to wrap. You know, if you're doing mm -hmm. the, the Christmas presents, they're in the little salt vein. Most if you're like me, you there. like easy to wrap. Easy to wrap in a square. Someone always hands me some <laughs> doll or something that's not in a box. Right. And I have to wrap it for Christmas. I can't Forget tell you. it. No, I can't it tell it. you the last time I, I wrap my own Christmas presents. <laughs> <laughs> my wife does the ones for our family. My mother does the ones for my wife. I ain't wrapped shit in years. <laughs> <laughs> I know the same feeling. I get the tag. The tag? The tags. Yeah. yeah, I do the tags. Yeah, yeah, yeah I do yeah. the tags. From Pop Pop to whatever grandchild. Here's your tag. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, me, on the other hand, I actually enjoy wrapping. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you do a nice job. I well, you're the Martha Stewart of the cigar world. That's right. I'm mean, the Martha Stewart of the cigar industry. And that's another thing <laughs> it comes down to is there are nice baskets that can be prepared by certain people that have, you know, a basket of cigars. It makes a great gift. It makes a great giveaway for an office party, something like that. Right. You know, baskets can be a, uh, a fantastic <laughs> gift for the holidays. But the lighters, the cutters, the gift packs, the little swag items, mm -hmm. ashtrays, humidors, things you might not ever buy for yourself and always make great gifts around the holidays. That's right. Absolutely. This is a store, by the way. You haven't <laughs> caught that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We just put our customers on camera. That's, that's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> so what we want to talk about major and focus on this show is about uh, becoming a cigar club member, which could be, which leads into the gifts, which could be a, a membership gift, you know, could be a good gift for your, you know, favorite cigar smoker out there and how they work. Are there a lot of monthly subscription bases? Same thing as like any other type of club where you're going to receive something in the mail, beer of the month, jelly of the month club like Clark Griswold. 
there are something you're going to get to the, at the door, the hot sauce gloves. Well, this particular one gets you maybe smoke through some different things that you haven't had, and there, there's a few of them that we're going to mention. And when we get Kevin, um, he's going to talk about the Saints and Sinners Club, which is specific to one brand of cigar, mm -hmm. which is different. That's more for fans of a certain cigar. They're going to get stuff from them, and we'll talk more in depth about that. So one club that I'm familiar with, and it's a, it, it's been around for a long time. You know, Cigars International has a Cigar of the Month Club where they're going to send you out samplers. Right. Um, how does that one work a little bit, Ed? Well, they have a sister company, Cigars.com, that I have bought from in the past. And uh, they send out, and I think Cigars International is the same thing, they send out a leaflet even with it, prepared. It goes to, tells you about each cigar. And then you get a packet of usually five cigars, four or five cigars. And you have a flat price that you know you're paying every month. Okay. So every month you know you might be paying forty nine ninety five. And you're gonna get X and you're gonna get X amount of cigars or thirty nine ninety five and and so uh, they do that kind of thing. And you, you usually get a good selection. You usually get four um, four really good cigars and one that's more of a budget type cigar. And usually one of the four will be an ultra premium, too. So what they're doing is they're giving you a little bit of a pallet. I mean, obviously, right. you're paying a flat fee. These things do have a price tag right. on they, them. You can't, get all, yeah, yeah. You, you can't get all ultra premium cigars for you know a quarter of the cost because it's still a business, and it makes sense. I mean, turning you on to the brands, have you found any brands in one of those samplers in the Cigar of the Month Club or became one of well, your Well, we favorites? ended up having one that I got that way that we ended up bringing in here, and that was uh, the Macanudo, uh, you know, the little one we like. The Crew Royale. Crew Royale. The Crew Royale. I got it, and I, sorry, General, but Macanudo Cafe has never appealed to me too much. And uh, I didn't think anything about, okay, I got a Macanudo in this package, you know. And I go out on my patio, and I light up that, Crew Royale, and I'm like, I must have grabbed the wrong cigar. <laughs> I looked at it. Oh, this is good. And I think I had another one because yeah. I got a double one. I brought it in, gave it to you. Yeah, very flavorful. And very flavorful. We go, oh, this is not your grandpa's Macanudo. You know? like, no, and I think that's also what happens with companies, too, is you get pigeonholed in the one thing that they do. And so, right. You know, with Macanudo, they brought out a brand new line, the, the Inspirado. The Inspirado line is yeah, well, yeah, they, very good. Cigar. Yeah, they created yeah. A, a, a more complex yes. Macanudo variety. Mm -hmm. You know, it comes with a, a more of a medium, a full body. And right, it's still not going to knock your socks off, but it's but it's really good, enjoyable cigar. Yeah, and they kept the price point and the good right. location. It can be an everyday cigar. You know, from early times of cigar smoking, you know, the Thompson catalog was kind of, in my opinion, that's your first club. Yeah. You're able to buy conveniently in your own home and have them mailed to you. And you earn credits so that at the end of the year they send you a certificate and tell you, hey, you've earned $120 in credits. Or you know, I've never actually ordered from them. From Thompson. Never. Yeah. It yeah. is. It was an older generation's yeah. um, They started magazine. as a catalog yep. yeah. company. They didn't start online. They started, they were doing catalogs before any of these other people went online. Right. I think before online existed, yeah, Thompson absolutely. has been doing yeah. catalogs, cigar yeah. sales. But some of the more modern day clubs, Kevin, were you know, there are some more boutique focal clubs yes. and uh, mm -hmm. cigar federations. One you're a member of. Cigar Fed is works. one. Uh, small batch is another one. Uh, small batch I just looked up. They have their cap to 100 people for this year. It's already sold out. So they, they allow only a minimum, a, a, a maximum, maximum number of 100 level. people. Okay. Uh, that's the only. That's how many people they have in the club, and it's sold out, of course. Um, cigar Fed, I want to say, is somewhere around 40 bucks a month, and you get some stuff that's their house brand, but that's still made by I think by most of their stuffs made by James Brown, so it's still still good quality stuff. Yeah, and there's James quite Brown a few from Black Label Trading. Jack Black Label Trading Company, of course, um, and I found some really good cigars from them that I never would have tried. Uh, they have one that's called Tiger Kitty Soft Paws. It's a Connecticut. <laughs> it's a really good Connecticut. 
Um, there's another one that's called the Panda Welfare. Comes in a little Chinese food container. Yeah. The top of the paper has uh, fried rice printed on it. <laughs> really a great cigar. I never would have tried that before. But they also send you stuff like the 1502 XO I've gotten one time. Uh, one of my favorites we brought in, the uh, Florida Selva. Yeah. The, yeah. Just the, not the Maduro, the uh, Connecticut they have. Fantastic cigar. Never would have heard of it. And I was sitting here smoking, and I said to our regular contributor, the other Josh, said, hey, this is really, really good. We should probably bring these in. Um, which brings us also to Saints and Sinners. Saints and Sinners is a private club by Tatawahe. Uh, Tatawahe is run by Pete Johnson, uh, Casper, and um, Kyle. Uh, all three of them are involved. And that's about 150, 155 a year. You get 15 cigars, three five packs, all of the same, you know, the same five cigars per five pack. Um, you, get a, you get a nice little coin. I don't know if you can see that here. Little challenge coin. But that is, you know, if you're with other Saints and Sinners members and you pull out your coin and somebody doesn't have it, they owe you a cigar. Uh, <laughs> this year they give you a cool little lighter. Cool little lighter here. Single flame. Always nice. Got a hat, t-shirt, toiletry bag, uh, luggage tags, and something else I'm forgetting. Um, really? Do they, do they have a, its own little forum for people? They, they, do, have the a, they do have a private forum, <clears throat> and you have access to some other swag that normal people <laughs> don't the, get access to. The non-saints. Exactly. So, Monte basically... Monte Cristo has their Monte Cristo Social Club. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that's another one. Which is another email group that, you know, you yeah. can have access to early buys and right. things like that. But all these clubs have the same function. They're getting you to try new cigars. They're getting you to be either committed to a brand, right? Mm -hmm. That's their goal. Try new things so you buy from their website. Right. Try new things that you might not have. But it could be a very good way to find things you wouldn't normally smoke. Oh, it is. It, it, it's, it's the way I came across a number of different cigars I've tried and enjoyed over the years, like um, La Gloria uh, Cubana was one that I really not wasn't as acquainted with. I'd seen it in stores, right? but I just had never smoked one. And I was on a big gauge thing, and they made a 760, and I said, oh, baby, there, there's your, there's value for your money right and so it was in in a pack that came in it was the 560 in the pack but I saw they had a 760 so that traded me up right to right. get the 760 so that I was I was getting that number seven La Gloria Cubana Series R and for years I've smoked that that Sumatra. And it's especially for people, I think, one, it's, it's either for the people who just like variety and they don't really want to select the variety, they want to be told what variety they like. Yeah. People who like variety, they like to be uh, you know, spontaneous, they like to get spontaneous things. But it's not just for spontaneous people. Because there's a lot of people out there where I see them, they, they want to get something new. Yeah. But they don't want to put out the money that they would normally spend and, and be fearful that they don't like it. That's right. So then they find themselves going back to the same things over and over and over again. Right. Now with a club, you're getting it at a discount, and you're spending money, but you're in it, which is all forcing you to maybe try some things that you haven't tried in the past. Definitely. So, and in, in this world, just like in the world of scotch or in, in beer or in wine, any of those worlds, variety, you're really missing out if you don't try a broad spectrum. Yes. In my opinion. Yeah. <clears throat> if you like stouts, try a porter or an amber lager. You right. like, you know, Merlot, right. try a Pinot Noir, you know? All those types of things, you know, they, they're, they have similarities, yet differences, and you can really find something that you really love and you were missing out mm. before. You know, with Scotch, just the region in Scotland or where it's made, the complexities, if you say, I don't like Scotch, well, how many have you tried? Because there's, you know, tens of thousands of varieties and of the tens of thousands of varieties, I would say a thousand of them have a different flavor profile. Yeah. All of them have some different profiles, but there's a lot of different tastes in scotch, That's in right. beer, in cigars, in wine. They all taste different. Mm -hmm. So the club would be another great gift, you know, for either cigar smoker in your life that wants to maybe try something different or just something to get show up at their house. Maybe they're too busy to even get into a cigar shop. It's one of those ways to, to do that. Now, when you go into a brick and mortar, ask your tobacconist, get an idea of what your profile is. 
categorize one cigar that you know you like. Right. I really like the Romeo and Juliet 1875. Well, we can do, we can dissect from there. We know that that's an Ecuadorian Sumatra wrapper. That's got Dominican fillers inside of it. It's also got some Nicaraguan. We can move you around to other cigars made by other manufacturers that have the same tobacco leaves, mm -hmm. but a different taste, a different the brand. Blend is different, mm -hmm. and that can start like to lead you down certain roads. A chef in uh, in in Pittsburgh might make a tilapia dish one way, mm -hmm. and the fellow. Exactly. In Cleveland is making it another way. A different little nuances, and different little spices. little different nuances. It's the same thing with blenders. Blenders are like the chefs of the cigar world. And uh, these guys have got a palate that's unrivaled by any of us that just finds a way to put these tobaccos together to make it uh, a pleasing cigar. Right. Because not all tobacco tastes good. No. You know. So they actually have some, you know, tobacco in cigars. We've all experienced the time when our wrapper is torn away, and we've ended up having a binder to smoke. Mm -hmm. And binders are not usually appreciated on the lips. No, um, there, there's something about them that just turns you off. No, absolutely. I mean, that, that's that's. And yet, it's very first. important in the whole process and the whole blend mm -hmm. of what's happening. Yeah, you're, the, the creation of balance. Mm -hmm. So um, what's your favorite uh, Christmas cigar gift you've ever gotten, Kevin? You know, I don't get many Christmas cigar gifts, which is unfortunate. Um, well, I'll just make it a gift for any time. I got a, I got a Swiss Army knife that had a three different size punches on it one year from my oh, wife. Oh, that's, that's very nice. Oh, really? Yeah, it's really nice. Um, and the other gift I got that I didn't particularly, nothing in it was particularly good, but my cousin went out and actually got me a Thompson sampler one year for Christmas. And just the thought that she went out to find this thing meant the world to me. That's awesome. That's what I tell a lot of people that come in, they go, oh, do I know if they'll like it? I said, look, if you're gifting cigars to someone who likes cigars, chances are pretty They're going to be appreciated. Yeah, yeah the fact that she went out and, you know, right. it was just the cheap humidor and the lighter and the cutter. Right, and right. 10 cigars. I'm sure uh -huh. she found them at a magazine somewhere. Mm -hmm. But the fact that she went, oh, I'm going to order this. Yeah. That See, was, I, and that's all that comes back to the Christmas, uh, you know, the thought that counts, too. Yeah. How about you, Ed? What's your favorite uh, cigar gift you've ever gotten? My favorite cigar gift? Um, I suppose, in some ways, I got to tip my hat to my son in law. Um, I was smoking at the time probably about 75% machine made, 25% uh, premium. Yeah. And he and uh, my daughter went together and bought a small Romeo and Julieta tube gift pack nice. that was out. And I got to try the 1875, the vintage was in it, the Reserva Real was in it. The reserve, they called it the Habano then, I think. Yeah. Uh, those were in it, and I got to try these. It was really nice of them to do that, you know. Yeah, heck yeah. And, that, and that, it, it starts people down the path, too. You know, like getting somebody a humidor with some cigars in it. Well, now they have a built-in place to store cigars. You know, people don't know where to start. You know, if you get a gift also out there, you get a gift and you get a humidor and you don't know what to do with it, you know, if you take it to your to your tobacconist, you know, well, us here, you bring that down, we'll show you how to get it seasoned, start it up. We'll show you how to fill it up. We'll show you how to fill it up on a budget, too. Mm -hmm. And uh, where it's going to keep good humidity. That's right. And you're going to have, you know, cigars to smoke that are at your house that you can get to guests that are going to be well-maintained and, you know, not embarrassing. But there is a level of maintenance that comes into your humidor and humidor mm -hmm. care. I think for me, I got a, um, I got a humidor that... Um, I've gotten two of them as gifts. One was uh, the museum collection, um, Humidor. Not the actual uh -huh. cigars inside, but the museum collection was from Monte yeah. Cristo. Romeo and Juliet had done one. They came with these boxes with artwork inside of them, and uh, I, I really enjoyed that one. I still use that one today. Mm. And I got a, you know, and I can't think of the brand, but it was one of the ones that were promotional, and I want to say it was a Davidoff promotional Humidor. 
And it's all inlaid. It has like an ashtray with a cigar on it. And it's a beautiful gift. It was a thought that counted. It just came in the mail randomly. No, not for no occasion. Someone just found it, thought that I would like it. And, and they were right. And they were right. So, right. you know, like you said, the cigar gifts for cigar people are, are very much appreciated. I know for me, if I'd want someone to buy me something that I, I, I definitely wouldn't buy for myself. Yeah. You know, I would probably buy a cutter and lighter for myself. Yeah. But, like... A strange humidor, like one of these ashtrays, like this. Yeah. You like to have them, but I don't know if I'd buy it. But I'd like to get it as a gift, like one of those kind of like a burner. Yeah. From yeah. Alec Bradley, which right, is almost right. looks like a little Bunsen burner. Exactly right. <clears throat> that 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 would be a neat gift and tube cigars too. I mm -hmm. mean, I don't, I don't normally buy a tube cigar. I just, I smoke them as soon as I get them. What the heck? Mm -hmm. What good is a tube? You know. But. It's a nice thought when they get something that they think, you know, it also looks nice, and and they give you a package of that, those. Yeah. We have. We have quite a few of the tube selections here. But just, yeah, it makes a good gift. Yeah. You know, if you're getting one cigar for somebody, or one or two, and not a box of cigars, that for somehow comes off, you know, as a better gift than just yeah. to say, you know, any of the cigars that are just in the cellophane. You know, it really has a nice presentation. And the way that it. is, uh, a, a cigar smoker that we both know that likes those has said that the tube cigar, he notices a difference because the tube in the Monte Cristos are cedar lined. Right. And so there's more of the cedary yeah. uh, flavor to yeah, it. Little, and little he enjoys of that little bit of cedar to the cigar. Yeah. Because you kind of, it's like a Sage Red Deluxe, you know, mm -hmm. when they do, they'll wrap cigars in cedar to get you that little bit extra cedar taste. Mm -hmm. It actually mm -hmm. changes, just a, a very tiny, you know, profile change. But it's profile subtle, change but the it's still there. Yeah. So. Which shows you a lot about how, I always, I maybe say this every season, at least once a season, the amazing thing about cigars is that we're using leaves that mm -hmm. have already been picked and we're getting flavor from them. Right, absolutely. And not only do we get flavor from them initially, they continue to reward us with flavor if we take care of them. Yep. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. indefinitely. Yeah. Which is a... That is yeah, can't do that with a maple leaf, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you can put it in a uh, photo album. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Boy, if I was scrapbooking cigars, man, I'd have a heck of a... Mm -hmm. Cigar scrapbook. There you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have a granddaughter who has a... Uh, one of the big gallon bags. Yeah. And she goes to my ashtrays and grabs my bands if I've taken them off properly. If not, she scolds me. And uh, she's saving these up, and she's going to get, she doesn't know it yet, but she's going to get a, uh, a scrapbook well, that's fun. at Christmas where she can glue them in. Some which is a good collect. thing for a kindergartner. That's right. Some people can collect stamps and some people can collect cigar bands. Yeah. <laughs> can't go wrong either way. No, you can't go wrong either way. <clears throat> so get out there. Get some gifts from the cigar people in your life. You know, yeah. check out those clubs like Saints and Sinners, Small Batch, um, Drawing a Blank, Cigar, Fed. cigar Federation. Mm -hmm. You know, the more traditional stuff would be Ours. CI, Thompson, you know. You can sign up for one in your local brick and mortar, like at the Smokestack and Moon, you know, they can do a sampler and send it out to you that way from stuff that they get in the store that's new. Just takes an email, maybe an address. But the holidays are coming. And we've been known to I customize things for people. Yeah, there's a little bit of a customization that goes on. <laughs> but so get out there. There's going to be some purchasing power this, this Christmas. We're going to get some cool gifts when you buy. Mm -hmm. uh, get a sampler pack for someone in your life. Send them to a club. <laughs> That's cool. That was a cool ending. Yeah, it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's get that on there. What is that? Yeah, Vader's Imperial March. March. Imperial March. For Ed Brandyberry and Kevin Kurtz, I'm Josh Eagle. Get out there and burn one.
Thanks for tuning in to another fantastic Inside the Humidor show. We want to thank you for your time. If you have any questions, feel free to give us a call at the shop or send us an email. You can reach me at ed at smokestackpgh.com. There are other email addresses that will appear on the screen. Just understand, we want to hear from you. Thank you.